Hi everyone, how's it going team here? And um, this is a bit of an unusual video for me to do, but um, I've recently been playing some Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And at one of the points I hit a moment, you know, when I was severely underleveled to progress in the storyline. And uh, one of the arguments that I got into with some people online was that I'm actually playing the game wrong. And it's not the Ubisoft's fault that um, there is, a, you know, a way to do it faster. So if you didn't know, Ubisoft now sells so-called time savers and one of them in game is a permanent xp boost so you can pay ten dollars or ten euro or whatever is your currency and get this permanent xp boost that will double xp gains from every source right and um, a lot of journalists were actually saying that this is the better way to play the game so i decided to check you know how much does it actually affect the game uh, and how much will my experience change if I will get the double XP booster? So I restarted the game and I started playing it from the very beginning. I played the storyline until I could not progress further and I wrote down everything that I did, right? So um, everything, all the data is in the spreadsheet right here. The spreadsheet is linked in the description of the video. So if you want, you can check it out yourself. Peer review and feedback is always welcome. So if you find any problems or errors or issues duping me, we can always adjust that. But uh, here's basically what I did, right? So I started playing it, I wrote down the leveling table. So this is quite typical for RPGs, you got the exponential uh, XP needed to level, it rises exponentially, there's nothing really surprising about that, right? So I wrote down it to level 31, because this is uh, as much as you get with double XP. So this is as much as I need, basically. And then I have the level 40 just for the enemy uh, XP percentage calculation, but we're going to get that uh, in the moment, basically. But, you know, it's nothing surprising here. Basically. Then I wrote down all the main quests. So this is just the storyline quest that you get through until you get to the quest of level 31 that you can no longer do. First of all, there's already quite a disparity here. The previous quest is recommended level 23, while the next quest is recommended level 31. Uh, and yes, I wrote down the XP rewarded for each quest total XP and what kind of level you will gain while when you basically finish the quest and just get this quest XP. So this is purely quest XP, right? And did the calculations for double that, right? So there's the chart over here. And as you can see here, even with the just XP from quests, the double XP is already better experience because it, it is closer to recommended level, which is this blue line. Um, still not quite there, right? Because you are gonna be under leveled in quite a lot of cases but it's better than the normal experience, which means that something strange is going on. There. So then I decided, okay, you know, you normally when you play the game, you don't really just do the quests. You have to do something. You have to explore things. You have to kill people. And the next basically primary source of experience is from kills. So there is um, the kills award experience based on how you do it, stealth or non-stealth, and also the type of enemy. Is it like, you know, archer or light soldier? Is it heavy soldier? Is it elite soldier? Is it captain or mercenary? Or is it like the leader of Ptolemark, which net you the most XP, right? So I calculated, I measured how much XP they give you per level. So at level 10, 20, 30, and 40. And I converted that to the percentage of the XP needed to level. So for example, at level 10, you need to kill about 260 uh, light soldiers or archer in stealth to actually get a gain level. And that goes down to 13 Ptolemarchs or leaders if you are going to stealth them again at level 10. Uh, the interesting thing to note here is actually the higher your level is, the less XP you will get in percentage from the XP required to level up from the enemies, which means you have to grind more the more you play, which is a bit of a weird design decision, I would say, but you know, whatever, let's see how that turns out. So I got all those tables and you can check them out and there's like the uh, basically uh, XP in percentage. And then I decided, you know, okay, so we got this average setup permission when you get like um, three light guys, three heavy guys, couple of elite guys, captain, and maybe a leader once every two, three missions. Let's be generous and say every two missions here. And you typically get like three encounters per level. Uh, so if you look at the quests, you will see that you get like typically two, three quests per level. And this is what it ends up being, right? So. I calculated all those percentages that you would get from just the fights. And this is how it looks basically. So if we are talking about three fights per level uh, with normal XP, and if you fight everyone without stealth, you will get 17.28% of XP of your level just by fighting, right? 
If you got the double XP booster, that is going to be 34.56%. And if you're going to stealth everyone, there's going to be 25.92% without XP booster or 51.85% with XP booster, which already looks ridiculous. Now, I thought, okay, you know, let's let's just decide that we're going to be somewhere in the middle and your typical player is going to kill half of the people just fighting with them and then assassinate other half, which means we take the average from uh, normal kills and uh, stealth kills, which means that with the normal um, XP, we get 21.6%. And if we get the double XP booster, we're going to get 43.21% of overall level XP just from fighting, right? So the last bit is the model that tries to mimic your typical gaming experience, right? So what it does is quite simple. So again, we got all our quests, we got the recommended levels, this is exactly the same. But now instead of just getting XP from our quests, we get the quest XP, plus the XP as the percentage from our level from this exact table from the encounters, right? So uh, from normal XP, we're going to get 20, 21%. And from uh, double XP, we're gonna get those uh, 40, whatever that is, 43% or uh, where is it? There we go, 43%, exactly. And uh, I calculated the same, right? So this is the projected levels and this is how the curves look. Like, look at this. So if you play without XP boost, you're gonna end up with a significant level differences at least in three or four cases, right? The worst one obviously being this Last bit when you get the home sweet home mission, which is nine levels higher than you. So you have to grind nine levels to actually progress. That is if you can get to this point when passing this mission and this mission, which are also quite tough. So those differences are not that significant. I mean, it's not nine levels, but this is still gonna be a large difference. And the enemy over here is gonna be way tougher than you and you're gonna spend, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes chipping away his health, it's it's possible to kill him and I did it, but it's gonna take ages to do that. On the other hand, we got this double XP leveling curve and just look at that. You're always gonna be above the curve and you're gonna end up exactly where you want on the recommended level by this home sweet home quest. Isn't that surprising? Like, oh, I would never get, how would that work? It's worth noting, by the way, that the quests in Assassin's Creed Odyssey scale up. So actually, when you play those quests over here, they're also going to be bumped up to your level and you're actually going to get more XP and more rewards because they're going to be higher level, which means you're, it's actually this curve is not quite correct. It's actually going to be even nicer and smoother experience. So yeah, it is the leveling curve in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is essentially quite screwed up. And I'm guessing the business department was like, yeah, let's just, you know, got it and sell it for half price. And that, there's your proof. Like, I, I might have screwed something up, but I'm guessing not much, even if I did. Uh, then again, you know, I didn't really measure the kills, for example, that many times. It's usually like two, three kills. And then I wrote the average, which is, they didn't seem to defer that much. But this is... This makes me really sad. I I really like Assassin's Creed games and I enjoyed most of them. And, you know, Odyssey already had the store, but they only sold like materials and money that, you know, if you don't want to grind, you want to upgrade something or buy something in game, you can just do it like this, which was eh, okay-ish, still kind of scummy for a $60 game. But this time around, they decided, hey, let's go further and got the game and then sell the normal experience so for people who actually don't want to grind everything and just want to do the storyline they can't do it right now right so if you just buy the game you cannot finish the story you won't be able to like like this this chart right here tells us that if you buy the game and if you just want to do the story you will not be able to do that uh side notes all of those quests are non, like they do not include the cultist hunts and all the other like sort of kind of main missions that are kind of also optional, but I guess you would have to do them at a later point. I don't know, but at this point you don't have to do them. And there's no cultist skill and everything, uh, which I guess would bump you up a couple more levels, but that still doesn't mean, you know, you would still be left as I was with a few levels of difference that you have to grind. But if you have this double XP booster, you would actually be able to just, you know, progress normally as you would in, in, in any game. And this makes me extremely sad because I was very excited to see Assassin's Creed finally drop the whole realism angle and start doing the crazy things. Like they have really cool abilities now. They have really interesting 
stories this time around, really cool side quests, and it's becoming more RPG like RPG RPG no more RPG like, and I like that. I'm really excited to see what the next Assassin's Creed would be, or at least was until I did all those calculations and. Yeah, now I'm not even sure I'm going to buy it because this is like to say this is anti-consumer is to say nothing. Basically, I think Jim Sterling put this the best, but this is just complete bullshit and makes me very sad. But yeah, so if you want to check the calculations or see them for yourself, so, you know, play with them and try to adjust the model, then the link to the spreadsheets are already set in the description. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you for watching and I see you next time. Bye.